Okay, we're gonna go through the chapter seven homework problems. Okay, so this first problem is saying, here's the recommended dosage chart for milliliters of ibuprofen, a medicine for pain and fever based on a child's weight in pounds. Sketch and label a scatter plot, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead over to Desmos and do my scatter plot on Desmos, okay? So here's Desmos. I can go ahead and label this graph. Um, I'll just call it recommended dosage. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a table of values in. Okay. I have my weights 9, 11, 17, 22, 27, 33, 38, 43, 54, 65, 76, 87. Okay. Now I'm going to go over to my Y values and enter those dosages in. Okay, so there are my dosages. Now, remember, um, once you've created your scatter plot, okay, you want to take a look at um, best fitting or zoom fitting the data. So remember over here on the left, there's a little magnifying glass. Um, if you mouse over it, it will say zoom fit. So you want to go ahead and click on that. And it's going to go ahead and bring up all of those uh, values for you. Okay, so there are your values. Um, there's your scatter plot. You can go ahead and sketch that um, or you can just screenshot it and um, insert it into your um, Google Doc, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at question number two. It says answer the following questions about the association between the weight of a child and the recommended dose of ibuprofen, okay? Is the direction of the association positive or negative? Well, looking from our, um, what we see here on our um, graph, it's definitely looking like it's positive. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say that it is positive. Okay, what does this mean in context? Okay, this means that as, remember, on your graph, we used um, weight for x-axis, and we used dosage for our y-axis, and remember your graph was doing something kind of like that, right? That's just kind of a rough sketch, okay? So in context, this means as weight increases, so does the dosage. I call spectrum. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and look at is the form of this association linear or curved? It definitely looks like it's following a straight line pattern. I can go back to my Desmos graph and take a look here. It does appear to be linear, okay? Okay, is the direction of the association strong, moderate, or weak? Okay, I would say this is fairly strong association, but if you really wanna take a look at the correlate, what the correlation coefficient is, you can go back to Desmos, type in Y1 tilde mx1 plus b, okay? And you can go ahead and look, the correlation coefficient is 0.9994. Remember, very, very strong means one, so we are super close to one here. So I would say that it is uh, very strong, okay? Um, very, very strong. It's almost, that means it's almost a perfect straight line, okay? All right, and then, um, it says use your Desmos to fit a linear model for this data. So we've already done that. We already went to Desmos. So what we want to look at in Desmos is down here. We want to look at our M value, okay, which is our um, basically our slope, okay. And then we want to also look at our B value, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into a linear model. So I'm going to use um, Y equals m, m is 4.69494 times x plus b, oh, we're 
I'm not going to use plus. We're actually going to use minus because B is a negative. So minus 5.24671. Okay. So that would be our linear model is Y equals MX. And we didn't use plus because our B was a negative. So minus 5.24671. Okay. Use your model to recommend dosage for a child weighing 50 pounds. Okay. So remember 50 pounds. These are our X values in pounds over here. These are our Y values. Okay, so what we can do is we can say, well, if this is X, we can plug that in here. So one way we can do this is we can take our equation and plug in 50 for our X value, and we can go ahead and calculate that, okay? Another way we can do this, and this will give us our expected dosage, okay, our expected Y value. Okay, so our expected dosage, another way we can find it is also by going to Desmos and typing in here the X value that we're concerned with, X equals 50, okay? Then it's going to show us where that is on the graph. It's where this black line and the red line cross, and so I can click on that dot where they cross, and it will actually give me the dosage, which is 229.5 milliliters, okay? So... We can, we would get the same thing if we evaluated this and plug this in that we would get here, okay? So you can either do it on your calculator here or you can do it by typing in the X value into Desmos and then looking at where those two lines are crossing in Desmos and clicking on that dot will give you the Y value, okay, 229.5, all right? Okay. Next, it says interpret the slope of your model in context. Okay, so here was our slope. Our slope was 4.69494. So remember, what does this mean? Well, our slope is our rise over run, which is really the change in y over the change in x. Okay, and so for us, we're going to use this as our numerator, and we're just going to put 1 in the denominator. So remember, your y values are representing milliliters, okay? Your x values are representing pounds, okay? So what is this telling us? This is telling us for every one pound, the dosage increases by 4.8. Uh, six, nine, four, nine, four milliliters. Okay. All right. So for every one pound, the dosage is going to increase that much. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Last, it says find the residual dose for a 76 pound child and explain what this means in context. Okay. So to find the residual, remember your residual is going to be your observed value, okay, which is your actual value, minus your expected value, okay? So it's figuring out how far apart these two things are, okay? So our observed value we're going to get from our chart for a 76-pound child. So we're going to go to our chart for a 76-pound child. I see that the observed value is right here. Okay, this is the number that I'm going to use is 350. Okay, so we're going to plug in that our residual is 350 minus. Okay, what would I expect? So the expected value when x equals um, 76. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change x to 76 in Desmos. I'm going to click on that dot. And so I get that the expected value is 351.569, okay? So then when I go ahead and subtract those, here's what I get. I get that I have a negative 1.569 is my residual, okay? Now, what does this actually mean? This means that the expected value is slightly lower, um, sorry, the 
observed value is slightly lower than the expected value, okay? So if I kind of take my, um, my Desmos and I zoom in, um, let me zoom in for you guys. You can see here that here's my actual value, this little tiny green dot. Let me zoom in even more so you can see that better. Okay, this little tiny green dot right here, this is my actual um, value. And my observed value is the point on the line. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at that the observed, val um, the observed value is on the line, the, um, sorry, the observed value is the dot, the expected value is the line, and so the dot is below the line. So that means that my, um, my actual dosage is a little bit less than what the expected dosage predicted by the line is, okay? And that's why it's negative because it is under the line. So residuals that are under the line will have a negative value, residuals over the line will have a positive value. Okay, and that's it for...